Whenever you have occasion to send a card, remember a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. <laughs> Charlotte Greenwood Show. And here she is, that love of the lady of stage, screen, and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. Hello, friends, and thank you, Wendell. Today, we tell the story of a young wo- woman's transformation from Captain Terry Warren of the West to Miss Terry Warren of Lakeview. Say, do you know I saw your picture pinned up in a barracks overseas? You did, Captain Warren. I had one request for my picture. <laughs> well, this boy said every time he looked at it, he felt as though he were back home in Carolina. <laughs> Naturally, I reminded him of one of those Carolina pines. <laughs> <laughs> and it isn't Mrs. Greenwood. It's Miss Greenwood. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're so sorry. <laughs> Playing the part of the captain in the wax, Charlotte Greenwood has as her special guest today the famous star of the Paramount picture Hold That Blonde, Miss Veronica Lake. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark greeting cards. To remind you that whenever you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So when you choose a card, look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Yes, don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect faith, your thoughtfulness. children, little Robert and teenage Barbara and Jack. Today, a whole town turned out to witness the parade of Lakeview's returning war heroes, and we now find Aunt Charlotte, Jack, and Robert, just as they arrive home, still talking over the inspiring celebration. Jack is saying... Oh, gee, Aunt Charlotte, that parade sure was terrific. Yeah, first the Jeeps came along. Then the Army came. Then the Wax came. Then the Marines came after the Wax. <laughs> I should have been a Wax. <laughs> And Charlotte, you sure had a lucky break being invited to sit in the reviewing stand. Yeah, how was it being a place in the reviewing stand? Fine, until I stood up and somebody tried to hoist the flag on me. <laughs> well, I'll be that's the first time anybody ever took you for a flagpole. No, a very famous American tried to hoist the flag on me. Who? Betsy Ross. <laughs> uh, hello there. Hello there, Sylvester. Hey, Sylvester, did you see the parade? Yeah. Well, what did you think of it? I don't know. You don't know? No. Oh, can't believe it really was. Well, Sylvester, when will you know? I'll know when I see it in the newsreel. <laughs> well, just maybe I'd better get dinner ready. Hello, everybody. Hello, Barbara. Hey, Barbara, what did you think of the parade? Well, what are you staring at? Well, what in the world is that get up for? Horses sell glasses. Yeah, Barbara, you don't have to wear glasses. And your hair all done up in a knot on the top of your head. It happens that it's very dignified that way. Dignified? Aunt Charlotte, did you ever wear your hair up in a big knot? No, but I put it up in ten little ones once. <laughs> there, you see. And a sea captain called on me while I was putting them up, and was he surprised? Why? <laughs> well, it was the first time he ever saw an old battleship doing ten knots. <laughs> You didn't tell us what you thought of the celebration. Oh, it was all right. The editor of the paper asked me to write something about those heroes in the parade. And did you? I don't see any particular story in it. Oh, Barbara, I talked to several wets and waves, and I thought they were very interesting. Nobody cares much about a girl who's got muscles and knows how to march in step. They've lost their femininity. Oh, I see. Well, mm. Did you by any chance find out where the girls are staying? Oh, those who live here have gone home and the others are trying to find places to stay. Nobody seems to be terribly interested. Hmm. The heroes who fought to make the world a better place to live in can't find a place to live, huh? <laughs> oh, Charlotte, was there any mail for me today? 
Oh, of course, I, I don't expect any, but I thought Jeff Crawford might... No, Barbara, no mail for you today. But what do I care? Love. I'm through with it. Me too. Who wants to be engaged? After all, love's nothing but a fad. If it is, it's a fad that will outlast bubblegum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no time for love now anyway. I'm writing a play. Oh? I want to be a great playwright like George Bernard Shaw. Of course, it's going to mean a lot of work for me. Especially raising a beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all, Aunt Charlotte, you're a career woman and you don't need men to make you happy. Men? Now, I know what they are. Now, don't tell me. Oh, of course, I won't took me out once. <laughs> well, me, I can do without women. Me, too. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, I invited a lady guest for a few days. A guest? Yes? She's a teacher. I talked to her this afternoon, and she had no place to stay, so I invited her here until she could find a room. Oh, Aunt Charlotte. A teacher coming here? Oh, when is she coming? Well, she should be here any minute now. She won't be in the way. She won't. Between her and Barbara, I'll never be able to get near the bathroom in the morning. Oh, teachers know too much. They started growing mine. You is. I suppose now I have to walk to school with her, too. I wish I was 11 or 12 or something. Oh, dear, so much fuss about a new teacher staying with us a few days. Teachers aren't new, they're old. Well, I hope she's an intellectual type. I hope she at least has a high IQ. Oh, Charlotte, what's an IQ? Intelligent quotient. What's that? It's what a man looks for in a woman after he's looked at everything else. <laughs> Another girl, I'm engaged. Robert, did I understand you to say engaged? Well, I am sort of, I think. <laughs> well, how long has this been going on? <laughs> Is there anyone I know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know her yet, Aunt Charlotte. She's from Cleveland and her name's Susie May. She's really new. Well, tell me, son, what makes you think that you're engaged to her? Well, it was awful cold in classroom last night. She was shivering, so I gave her my sweater to wear. Oh! Oh. Now, that was chivalrous of you, Robert. I have a very tender memory of a man who who once took off his coat and spread it over a mud puddle so I could walk across the street. Gee, just like Sir Walter Raleigh. It was Sir Walter (laughs) Raleigh. Life is one thing, Robert, but being engaged is another. It's a rule in school, Aunt Charlotte. A girl wears a fellow sweater and they're engaged. Susie May is wearing mine every day, so I guess I'm engaged. My cup stops with it with a hole in the elbow. <laughs> if I remember the condition of that sweater, your engagement won't be a long one. <laughs> you know, Aunt Charlotte, it's all right for Susie May to wear my sweater while we're engaged. But if we get married... I'll tell you one thing. What's that, son? I'm going to wear the pants in the family. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Bicycle clips and all. <laughs> and, Charlotte, don't you think it'll be dull to have a teacher for a guest? Oh, now, we'll manage. Well, I may find it very difficult to concentrate at home with a stranger around the place. Creative mind shouldn't be confined. If I'm to develop my aptitude for writing, I need lots of latitude. Well, when I was young, I had a kind of aptitude. They gave me plenty of latitude. What did you develop? Altitude. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. I bet that's your school teacher already. I think I'll go upstairs. Please hand me my horn and glasses, Robin. I think I'll go in. Well, I'll answer the door, but wait a moment, children, before you all go. Well, I suppose a guy has to face things sometime. Oh, how do you do, my dear, and welcome. Thank you, Miss Seymour. Come in. Children, I'd like to present... Oh, isn't that teacher? It's a soldier. No, it isn't a soldier. It's a girl. She's a captain. (laughs) Mrs. Greenwood, is there anything peculiar about my appearance? Do I look much different? Well, much different for me. (laughs) (laughs) Children, this is Captain Terry Warren of the WAC, and she is a teacher. Captain Warren, meet the Barton clan. Barbara, Jack, and Robert. Hello, Barton clan. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Captain Warren? Hello. You wish. Some poor kid is still going to be out of luck having a captain for a teacher. Oh, I don't think they will be, Robert. No. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got a little work to do. Well, Jack, will you take the captain's luggage to her room, please? Gosh. 
Look at all the army equipment she has. Mm -hmm. She's got plenty of the other kind, too. <laughs> Don't bother. I can handle my luggage. Thank you. I'm used to it. Yes, I guess you've been handling it for a long time, haven't you? Mm -hmm. It's part of army routine. Well, Captain Warren, you get used to civilian routine. Jack will take your baggage for you. Won't you, dear? Hmm? Oh, well, of course. Sure. We'll see you later. Me are you out of the army now, Captain Warren? I got my discharge papers right here. My passport to civilian license. I see by your ribbons you were overseas. Just that confirmed. Oh. You've been to France, Paris. Well, you've traveled everywhere. By boat, train, airplane, jeep. Oh, travel does things for you. Yeah? <clears throat> Look at all the traveling I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Which way did you travel? Up. <laughs> Captain Warren, you seem so awfully young. Well, I'm young enough to tell my age anyway. Twenty-four. Oh, you don't have to be young to say you're twenty-four. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. <laughs> Captain Warren, were you in any active fighting? The worst battle I was in was just outside of Paris. Really? Yes, Colonel Jimmy Stewart called for a secretary and 30 of us fought like mad to get the job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Captain Warren, didn't you? Well, Barbara, let's not bother Captain Warren with any more questions until she gets settled. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about bothering me, Miss Greenwood. I think you're all going to be a big help to me, and I'm going to need help. Our help? We don't know anything about being a teacher. After three and a half years in the Army, Barbara, I don't know much about being a civilian. <sighs> I assure you it's very dull. Well, I've never been a writer or a captain, but I found life very exciting. And <laughs> you've got to extend both hands to it and see it with clear eyes, unprejudiced and unafraid. I'm, I'm afraid I'm a little awed by the idea of, well... Becoming a woman again. Well, what makes you think, Captain, that you ever left off being a woman? Well, Miss Greenwood, when the bugle blows at the crack of dawn, that means action. You get up, you get washed and dressed, and by 6 a.m. you're out on the field looking for your shoes. That's life in the Army. Looking for your shoes? What shoes? The ones we threw at the bugler. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Greenwood, there's no time for personal vanity or triviality. Well, that would suit me fine, because I'm through with frivolous nonsense. And bothering with such trivialities as boys. And how I look. You know, girls, you can't turn life aside with a military salute or a pair of horn-rimmed spectacles. It just can't be done. Now, maybe I can show you why. two days until Christmas. And there's one important part of your Christmas shopping you just can't wait. That is the selection of your Christmas cards, the addressing, the stamping, and the time you must allow in the mail. So, tomorrow's sure, select your cards at your Hallmark dealers. There you'll find dozens of fine, distinctive cards appropriate for everyone you know. Charming cards for dear ones far away that will awaken happy memories of Christmases at home. You'll find clever, humorous cards and gay little cutouts that the youngsters will enjoy. There are many religious cards expressing the spiritual joy and beauty of this first peacetime Christmas. And for friends, sweethearts, and each member of the family, you'll find a hallmark Christmas card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So go to your hallmark dealers while his wide selection is still complete. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. May of the Boston children, Aunt Charlotte invited a new school teacher to spend a few days with them. The children were disinterested when the teacher turned out to be Captain Terry Warren, a young whack in the process of becoming a civilian. At breakfast the following morning, Terry is saying, I think I'm still asleep and dreaming, Mrs. Greenwood. Being in this country again and in a real home, sleeping on a bed with springs, bathing in a bathtub instead of a tin helmet. <laughs> you bathe in a tin helmet? That's right. Well, what did you do when a brass hat came along? <laughs> <laughs> Not 
Oh, you take a bath in a tin helmet. <laughs> you do it in sections and hope you don't miss any. Mm-hmm. Well, with all my sections, I'd need a tank and a two-week furlough. <laughs> What about the basketball game tonight? Uh, won't you go with us? Thank you. I'd like to. I might as well have some fun before I settle down and figure out how I'm going to live. What? With your army record? Oh, well, I'll probably do all right as far as my new job is concerned. I was lucky enough to have finished my teacher's training before I joined up. But how will I do as a woman? Just an ordinary woman. From where I'm standing, it looks as if you're going to do all right. <laughs> You've got all the right things in the right places. <laughs> But I've been hidden inside this uniform for three and a half years now. Because of this uniform, I've been regarded as somebody. Respected, looked up to. Even courted. Mm, Courted? (laughs) What do you do with your old uniform? (laughs) Come to think of it, I did wear a uniform once. Mm. I bet you look sharp in it, especially around the elbows. (laughs) You see, Miss Greenwood, what bothers me is... Well, was it Terry Warren who got that respect and attention and the courting? Or was it this uniform? Well, Captain, why don't you shed the uniform and find out? Uh, what that could interest the Captain in some of these smart tailored suits? Oh, no. Nothing tailored. No, me. no. Show us some dresses. The more outrageously feminine, the better. Oh, yes, Miss Greenwood. Over the way, yes. That raincoat you ordered several weeks ago still hasn't come in. It's all right. I won't need it anymore. You won't? No, I've already made that trip to Hollywood. <laughs> hey, Terry, here is a little item that you we really can't overlook for you, a sweater. Now, try it on. Do you think I look all right in a sweater? <laughs> that window dummy just turned around. <laughs> Why don't you get a sweater like this? No, thanks. I knitted a sweater like that for myself once. How did it look on you? The same way it looked on the needles. Certainly, madam. What type of hat? Well, show the captain something very foolish and silly. Oh, I have just the same. A new felt hat with two or three feathers in front, two feathers on the side, and one feather in back. It just came in today. Where did it come from? It flew in when they opened the door this morning. <laughs> young lady likes them off the face curls. Well, <laughs> you know, Terry, I just spend half my time in this beauty parlor. Oh, I didn't spend the other half in another beauty parlor. <laughs> Say, would the young lady care for a manicure, too? Please, with flame red polish. Terry, when you get out of here, there'll be a veritable masculine stampede. You'll have dates every night in the week, and you'll be rushed to the altar. Oh, Miss Greenwood. And when they rush you to the altar, Terry, do me a favor. What's that? Make notes so you can tell me what it looks like. Come on, Aunt Charlotte. Do we have to wait for that whack school teacher? Yeah, be patient, Jack. The captain will be right down. And here she is, Miss Greenwood. Well, well, well. I'm sorry I'm late. Hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> is that Captain Warren? Not Captain Warren, Jack. Miss Warren. Oh, <laughs> wow. He's a virgin. You're super super. Why, Robert, you give me hope. <laughs> hey, the army sure was hot on camouflage if they hid that under a uniform. <laughs> it looks like you're going to pass muster, Terry. How do you feel? Kind of wobbly on these high heels, but otherwise luxuriously feminine. You mm-hmm. smell good too, Captain Warren. <laughs> Good. She was in that bubble bath for an hour. Oh, <laughs> wonderful thing, bubble bath. Yes, in my day, I used to take milk baths like Anna Held. <laughs> Did milk baths make you look like Anna? No, like Elsie the cow. <laughs> What grade are you going to teach? I'm going to teach the fourth grade, Robert. The fourth? That's mine. You're going to tell us you're going to be my teacher. My teacher? This is what me. I know it's going to cost me a fortune and apples. <laughs> Gosh, to think we had a slip chick like this in the house and I was blind as a bat. Miss Warren, please do me a favor. What is it, Jack? Order me around. <laughs> Very well, Jack. Take my arm and walk me down Lakeview Avenue to the basketball game. Oh, boy. Imagine me walking down Lakeview Avenue with you on my arm. 
Oh, oh, oh. the fellas look up to me. Oh, oh, oh. they'll be sidetracked on the way up. <laughs> Wonderful game, Miss Greenwood. I enjoyed every minute of it. Well, I'll tell you, it looks as if you brought our team luck. Did you see that last basket shot up, Charlotte? You see that ball crisp in the middle of the floor. That's nothing. I used to score a basket from the whole length of the floor. Miss Greenwood, mm-hmm. you threw the ball from one end of the court to the other right into the basket? No, I just leaned forward and dropped it in. <laughs> <laughs> Would you excuse me for a few seconds while I run upstairs and freshen up? Oh, boy. You sure is some destroyer. Mm. Gosh, Aunt Charlotte, every fellow with the game wanted to know who that gorgeous creature was with it. Was Jeff Crawford among his spellbound admirers? Nat, Nat. In fact, Barbara, Jeff Crawford, the guy you've been so anxious to impress, wanted to know who the goon with the big spectacles was that was with it. Oh, boy, did he laugh. Well, I don't know what he or anyone else thinks about my appearance. If they have no respect for a person who wants to accomplish something. Captain Warren has accomplished a great deal. I know you are, Charlotte. I'm going up to my room. And you can tell Jeff or anybody else for me that I think they're they're strong. Good, Aunt Charlotte. What are you supposed she's going to do? Oh, she'll do the right thing, Jack. Hold on. Did anyone anyone call? Yes, indeed. Telephones have been ringing steady for the past 20 minutes. Who called? I don't know. Well, didn't you ask, Sylvester? Yeah. But what did they want? They all want to meet the new teacher. Well, you can't blame them, can you, Sylvester? Well, I don't know. But what do you think of the young lady? How did she look to you? I don't know. Well, you saw her, didn't you? No. Afraid to look. There's a telephone again. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, this is Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Lovely. She's lovely. We couldn't take her eyes off her today. Where did you find her? Well, you had her, dear. You and the mayor and the whole town. Nonsense. Well, I've never seen her before in my life. Oh, yes, you have, darling. But she was hidden under a hero's uniform like thousands of other women coming home from war. Mm-hmm. She was one of the girls in the parade. Mm-hmm. Charlotte, you make us ashamed of ourselves. Mm-hmm. The mayor and I are coming right over. Come along and bring the whole city council if you like. Well, here I am, Miss Greenwood. Hello, Sylvester. Hello, Brian. Oh! <laughs> Why, Sylvester, you look. Yeah, and it's just like grating cheese. Grating cheese? Yes, goop temples. <laughs> oh, I guess I look all right. All right. You saw how that colonel who was sitting in front of us in the, at the game looked at you. You know, the one that you gave that snappy G.I. salute to? Colonel, mm. did I salute him? Well, yeah. Oh, never mind. If I could get the kind of a look he gave you, I'd go around saluting with both hands. <laughs> well, I guess the stampede is beginning. Oh, oh, best years. Oh, Miss Warren, you're proud to me, Daddy. I mean, you're actually glad to see. I mean, you really are. You make everything around you become alive. Even that old fly- floor lamp is standing up to the to breathe. Well, that old floor lamp is me. <laughs> <laughs> Gertrude Gleason. Hello, Gertrude. Oh, Miss Warren. They say you're a school teacher. I mean, it would be too good to you if you teach my class. I mean, you could really teach us something. I mean, you really would. I mean, you could, really. What are you majoring in? History. I'm majoring in history. I, I mean, I really am. I mean, I am really. I mean, I really am majoring in history. Well, that's appropriate. History repeats itself, too. <laughs> Barbara will be delighted to see you. I got into town late this evening and went right here again. Yes, well, you see if you can find Barbara and tell her Jeff Crawford is here. Okay, Charlotte. By the way, Miss Greenwood, at the game, that is, I saw, well, I knew. Uh huh, I know. Come along, I'll introduce you. Mm-hmm. Terry, this is Jeff Crawford. Jeff, meet Miss Warren. How do you do, Miss Warren? How do you do, Miss Crawford? How do you do, Miss Warren? <laughs> yes, how did you like the game? Oh, what a score. Lakeview 5, 
Before 97. <laughs> <laughs> Love is making a mud out of jail. <laughs> Greenwood, who is that funny-looking thing with the, the horn-rimmed spectacles and her hair done up and a knotted jacket at the game? Oh, that one, well... She's just a passing fancy, yes. You won't see her around again. No. Oh, Barbara. Now you're my Barbara. And how lovely you look, darling. Doesn't she? Oh, thank you. Jeff, I'd like to introduce you to some of the others. You here. bet. Let's go. Come in, Jeff. Terry, so you wonder whether you'd be a success as a woman. <laughs> to think that a few clothes and a new head and could make a woman of me again. Oh, no such thing. You can put fancy clothes on a board and it'll still be a board. I ought to know. Look at me. <laughs> No, Terry, you didn't stop being a woman when they put a uniform on you, and you didn't start being one when you said it. But this morning I thought so just consciously, out of place. Terry, you might have thought that years of discipline, of regimentation, could leave a woman a little helpless as a woman, but it hasn't. You've proved it can make a greater woman. You've not only been able to stand up and take all that a man can take, but you still haven't lost your charm. You've gained the love and respect of the whole world for womanhood. I still have you to thank for helping me. Oh, no. For all you girls in uniform have done for us, we thank you. Well, how's it going? Fine, Jack. You know, Miss Warren, you're going to be unanimously elected in this late view of 1945. You know, I was in a beauty contest in Philadelphia. I got one vote, and it caused a lot of trouble. Why? They accused me of stuffing the ballot box. <laughs> Again, the next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying word, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of finest quality. To tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste your thoughtfulness. And I'll call it Greenwood. Friends, I think we all agree it's wise to save for rainy days. We all admit that thriftiness deserves the highest praise. And yet I think a lot of folks, like me, and maybe you, don't save for rainy days because we hope the skies stay blue. Haven't you heard some people say, oh, saving's sort of dumb. Because after all our sacrifice, the rainy days don't come. There's a way, a different plan, to save for times ahead. Let's not save up for rainy days, but sunny days instead. That holiday you hope to take, some far-off place to roam, that car, that house you want to buy, that boy you want back home. Yes, all those dreams can all come true without a magic wand if you just save for sunny days, and buy a victory bond. <laughs> now, until next Sunday, at the very same time, this is Charlotte Green saying, So long, friends, until we meet again. So long, neighbor, till next Sunday, Captain Terry Warren was played by Miss Veronica Lake.